Okay, this how-to video is going to talk about AUKAD CIP, the Component Information Portal. So um, what this is, is it's a, it's a starter database, it's a, a predefined database structure that allows you to access data, parametric data directly from people like DigiKey, Farnell, Mauser. Um, and you can then build your, your parts, add your part data and, and, and control all that from within inside the AUKAD Capture CIS window basically. So. So traditionally, if, you, if you're using a CIS flow, your database could be a Microsoft Excel file, it could be a Microsoft Access database, it could also be an SQL database. And um, if you're trying to kind of, if you need to add new parts, you would then obviously go after a web browser, browse for those that part information, and then you'd be copying and pasting information from that web browser into your, your database structure, whether that, as I said, it'd be Access or Excel or SQL. Um, and then you could then use that information once you got into AUKAD Capture CIS, you'd go to the CIS Explorer and, and place the part that way. With CIP, you can obviously do things a bit more kind of integrated because it's tied directly in from the AUKAD Capture window. So we can access CIP one of two ways. And um, the first way is there's a tab. So I, if I install the app, eventually there's a CIP app, I can effectively have the app, the tab inside of uh, AUKAD Capture CIS. The second method is via a, a, an Explorer window. So an HTML, any internet browser, HTML window, I get the same login information. So you can give this um, this web address effectively to somebody like a, a purchasing person who needed to go and buy parts or edit parts or look at manufacturing data, etc. And you can give them access to the to the same database. So let's just log in and we'll just have a quick run through of uh, what CIP can give us. So we get some tabs along the top. So I can look at effectively, I've got an administration tab where I can do things like build rules, I can do uh, distribution, so I can look at the synchronization with distributors. Let's go to the distributor tab. So Farnell, Mauser, Future, DigiKey, and Arrow. I can actually synchronize this data, so I get quantity and costing on hand from these distributors. I can synchronize that and get up-to-date information directly from those distributors, uh, so I'm getting a live link for that. Um, I have specific configurations, so I can choose different countries for where DigiKey information comes from, the Mauser information comes from, the final information comes from, so you can put all that in. And obviously the costing, the price information. If you've got a Farnell or Newark account, you can put your specific customer ID and customer key in, and then you'll get any pricing pricing information that's specific to you. The admin tab also gives us things like um, users' roles and permissions. And what this does here is allow us to have different roles for users. So I can, I can add users here. Um, and they can use the Windows authentication if I want, if they want to use the Windows authentication. Um, and by doing that would mean um, they can just log in with their default Windows uh, login. Or you can have a separate login detail here. Once you've got that, you can give them a specific role that will give them control over whether they can, you know, have full control. So like an admin or a librarian, we can do temporary parts, formal parts, delete parts, manufacturing parts, create edit bombs, support all the modules out. Um, so lots and lots of uh, different settings for the whole of CIP. Or you can give somebody like a purchasing role where all they can do is effectively add and edit manufacturing data and maybe send an email notification. So you can control how everybody looks at everything. If we look at the components tab, I can then access the data that I would see in a CIS Explorer window. So let's just go to the capacitors table. Um, this will effectively give me exactly the same property information, but I do have an edit button here so I could then go and edit this um, to make sure that the part is okay. Um, or if I've got changes to that, if I find a mistake somewhere and a, you know you want to make some updates or be, a part becomes obsolete, you have control to make edits to this part. Um, so there's my part number, my description, my PCB footprint, number of pins. All these properties are available inside of uh, the CIS Explorer window. I can do things like preview the PCB footprint and this will then launch the, uh, the Allegro free viewer and I'll get a preview of my PCB footprint. I can also preview the schematic symbol, so there's a preview button here. And if I've actually launched CIS from within uh, or can capture CIS, then what I can do when I've got a schematic design open, I could then effectively just go and place this directly on the canvas. So you have that capability as well, placing directly from CIA, CIP. Um, so there's all my property information. I've got the same for the manufacturing information. So I have a, a company part number here but I can have multiple different manufacturers. So in this example, I've got Avix and Kemet supplying the same part number for my company part number, and I can have different information here. 
If we scroll to the very bottom, we've also got distributor data. So this distributor is using this distributor part number. He's got this quantity on hand, and this is the cost in breakdown depending on how many I'm buying. And there's actually a unit cost that you can use for um, if you're doing a bill of materials costing. So all this information is available to you and in available in the CIS Explorer. There is a, a CIS database search. So if I'm specifically looking for a part, I can build searches and save searches. So I can add different rows here to do things like look for any database properties. So it's like a query builder. If I'm specifically looking for a part that I need to edit or add. There's a compliance tab that effectively allows me to tie directly into Silicon Expert. Um, so I can log in with that and get all my uh, compliance data from Silicon Expert. Quite a useful function that you can tie directly into here. Um, the distributor search, or well, let's go back to the, com the capacitor, sorry. So back on the, on the main components tab, so if you're looking at a component, I've got part information, I've got the manufacturing information. I also have a mechanical parts tab, so um, if you have any mechanical parts that you always use when you're placing a, co a component. A good example is like a connector, a DIN 41612 connector. Um, you may well have two screws, two nuts, two washers that you use every single time you place that connector. Rather than adding separate items to a bill of materials, you could add those as mechanical parts to the connector. And then every time you place that connector, those parts are already automatically added to the bomb for you. There's a history tab that would effectively show who made the edit, when the edit was made and what the edit was. And that's a full history that's going to show that for the component history and for the manufacturing part history as well. So you get full control to see who's done everything to the parts so you can keep a, a good record of that. There's also a where use tab. So um, you can import bill of materials here. So you can import CSV bill of materials directly out of uh, the capture CIS, import that into the CIP command or tool. Um, and then that would allow you to effectively look for where you. So this part is specifically used on these five bombs. Um, so if a part became obsolete, I could then quickly locate which parts I need to go and modify or find alternates for. So uh, quite useful. The distributor tab gives me uh, links to go and browse uh, the, those distributors. So Arrow, DigiKey, Future, Mauser and Farnell um, for their parametric data. So if I wanted to go and find a new part that I hadn't used before, I could very, very easily just go and find this part. So I'm going to go and look for an LMV. Um, let's go and look for an LMV 7231. This is using an API to go and search effectively DigiKey, Mouser, Farnell, and Arrow. And it's come back with all these parts. So I've got a few parts um, that are suitable. The part numbers are all OK. Um, Looking at the quantity, this is the quantity on hand. It might not be the cheapest one, but this is the best one. Maybe that's the better one because it's cheaper. Um, so let's select this part here. I then get to see the parametric information for that part. I'm getting links to things like a data sheet and a, and a graphical representation, the costing information. This is all the parametric data that effectively DigiKey is storing on this part. If I'm happy with that, I can say, let's go and add that to a, a table. So I'm going to choose the ICs table. I can either add this as a temporary part, which will create a new temp part for me, or I can add it to an existing part if I wanted to add an alternate manufacturing supplier. So I'm going to create a temporary part. Do I have a schematic symbol for this? So I can then browse my schematic library. Have I got an LMV? Doesn't look like it. Okay, fair enough. We'll leave that. Uh, we'll click on new and I can actually give it a name. So let's put LMV. 7231 and I can either then go and either draw the schematic symbol manually using the, the, the schematic symbol part editor or I can go to some, one of the free resources such as Ultra Librarian, Snap EDA, uh, Semexis to go and see if they've got a schematic symbol for this. Um, there's also the search providers option inside of AllCAD Capture that would allow me to get, maybe go and browse directly to Ultra Librarian or Semexis to see if they've got that part. PCB footprint, I know I haven't got a PCB footprint for one of these so I'm just going to put in new and I'm going to give it a specific PCB footprint name. The rest of it from a mapping point of view. So this is effectively um, the DigiKey part number. This is the value and it's going to map by default to a distributor part number. If I wanted to choose a different field, I could then just go and select it from this list here. Um, I'm just going to accept all the defaults here because they're good enough for what I need. So I'm just going to click on add. And then this physically adds this part to my ICs table. So it's generated temporary part 462. It's populated the fields that are available for me. So um, there's things like an unassigned part type. Um, so if I then went to the design, let's just open a page and then we press the 
the Z key to place the database part. If I look under the ICs table now, I've now got this unassigned part type, and there's effectively my uh, my part. Now I do by chance have a schematic symbol and a PCB footprint with those names on, so uh, which I got from the search providers option inside of Warcad Capture. So you can do that first. You can do that as a as a secondary process, but it's a matter of matching the, the PCB footprint name and the schematic symbol name. But if we go back to uh, CIP, what we can do is have an email notification. So um, if you have a user that goes and has the ability to create formal or temporary parts, it can then email either uh, another user, so another peer or a librarian to say, right, so-and-so has added, a user A has added this part. So what I want to do is I want, you need to go and check this part and make sure the properties are populated correctly. So he would then get email notification. He could then open this part and edit it. There's an auto assign function for a part number so I can allocate my next company part number. There's also auto assign options for description and part type. And these use other fields, so other fields here to populate uh, the description and the part type uh, fields. And what that does is it gives you consistent data. Um, you can set that up under the admin and build rules commands. Um, so that allows you to do that or you can then just manually come and populate these data. So I want to always put in the number of pins, so I'm going to type that. And you'll notice as soon as I start to type, so what it does is it shows me other fields or other values in that field. So I can then be consistent with the data that I'm coming. This so happens to be 2.1 millimeters, so that's fine. Uh, it's now going to be a checked part. And you can update the fields as required. The part type is effectively um, the folder structure inside of the CIS window, so um, you can be very specific here and have maybe your company name backslash it's an SMD part and it's a it's a hex type device so we're just going to put that in as the fields the value is okay these are all okay um, I don't use surface mount I use SMD so I can type to be very specific about keeping data consistent in the in the fields that I have once I'm happy with that I can then uh, click the tick to confirm that part that part is now confirmed in my database so if I then go back to um, the page and we press Z again to place a database part. If I look under the ICs folder, I now have a My Company folder and an SMD folder and a hex, which follows that um, part type value that we put in. And there's my part ready to go and place. And I can then go and place that down on the canvas. And if we double click that part, there's all that property information that's been transferred directly from um, the DigiKey website. So I've not had to type any of that in manually. Um, and it can really save you a lot of time uh, managing your database this way. So that's all CAD CIP.